we are inching towards a 10,000 crore mark, uh, you know, from the loan on my house to 10,000 crores has been a journey. Uh, my first borrowing happened when I was in my 10th standard when I went to the local Kirana shop guy to ask for some provisions with a promise to pay later. And that guy said, I know you, why do you hesitate so much? I know you play cricket here in the gully. So don't worry, just take it. And I knew the bill at that point was 72 rupees. So my first borrowing was 72 rupees. And I realized the, the power of social capital, the power of goodwill, the power of trust that can unlock lasting contracts which no legal document can bring in. My entry into banking was a blessing. I was doing my engineering, took the Banking Services Recruitment Board exam during my plus two and my family was actually spending 50% of our family income at that point in time on my studies. So six months into this uh, engineering is when I got a job in Canada Bank is when the choice was obvious that I better leave my engineering, save that, you know, that, that outflow for the family and start earning. My first posting in banking in Canada Bank happened in a rural branch. So my baptism into banking happened in rural, which is predominantly agriculture, because rural and agri are two sides of the same coin. So there were there were hundreds of customers who did not you know, know how to write, and they were dependent on you know, the, the branch of Kendra Bank at that point in time to to save, to you know, to, to borrow, all of that. And one particular episode, you know, there, there was one customer of ours uh, who did not have one leg, youngster, could be about 30 or so. He, you know, was coming to the office, uh, sitting the whole day and going back. And, and I was wondering, why is this gentleman coming, sitting and going back? Uh, you know, after the third day, I went to my manager and asked, why, why is this gentleman coming and going? And I was new, I had no clue. And he said, no, 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 his loan is to be renewed. And, and the person who is supposed to renew is either busy or is on leave, something like that. I actually lost my cool and, and, and fought with my branch manager saying, Terry, you could have asked one of us, no? why do you make this gentleman suffer? Realized how vulnerable these you know, people are and their dependence on, on, uh, on uh, the bank funding. A lot of our products as a bank at that point in time were designed from the perspective of the provider of the product, which is from the perspective of a bank. So a crop loan, which is given to a farmer, what banks were doing or continue to do in most of the cases is disburse, expect the customer or the farmer to keep the money aside, invest, 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 harvest and pay back. But the issue is this person does not have a bank account or has many demands on this money. So the moment you have liquidity, the investment may not happen in the activity. You actually may may end up using that precious liquidity for something else. And then when they have to invest in the crop, they may either compromise that step or go to informal money lenders, sell their crop in advance, or you know do uh, high cost borrowing, which all have an impact on the harvest, the, the extent of uh, realization that you get from the harvest. Right? This is if the crop goes through the entire cycle. Now imagine for whatever reason if the crop fails. Now from a debt perspective you are, you are indebted completely but then as an activity it has not gone through but you have used the money you have to still pay back. So ideally speaking, the risk management philosophy has to be, can I manage your risk? Because my money is risky in your hands if your risks are not mitigated, right? The only way to make agriculture happen 
is in a symbiotic way aligning the incentives being a partner being together right those are the things that 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 got ingrained thanks to these experiences and the best thing again for me to have happened is it was during that period that i stumbled into heartfulness it it gave me what is an anchor something to hold on internally and the kind of decisions that 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 i could make which don't sound too logical from a risk perspective samunati started uh, uh, with a loan on my house and my provident fund money from my previous employment so i took a loan on my house uh, to the extent of 50 lakhs and uh, my provident fund money was about 30 lakhs uh, and i'm from a from a lower middle class background so other than that i had nothing getting investors was a problem uh, because uh, lending at that point in time that to in agriculture was was not uh, uh, it's actually an oxymoron you know lending and agriculture and a private entity you know the, you know people were a little little apprehensive about the model many people dismissed saying are he has gone crazy and one of the investors said uh, i will put in money if you confirm that or commit that you will do only agriculture is that neki or pooch pooch that is what i wanted to do and you are saying you would support me so you know let, let let's uh, go with it and uh, that's how the uh, journey started once i got the first check there was no looking back samunati exists to make markets work for small holder farmers so that's the reason why the company exists samunati as the name suggests uh, is uh, collective growth collective prosperity and collective elevation it's a sanskrit word which is a combination of two words sam unnati sam being collective unnati growth prosperity and elevation and we consider ourselves as a value chain enabler and the tools that we have so far in our understanding is working capital is one key constraint removing the working capital constraint among the players in the value chain so whenever there is a buy and sell the buyer wants to pay later seller wants money immediately we come in between and release the working capital constraint second key constraint is market linkages how can we bring markets closer to the farm gate closer to the farmers and how can we make the farmers access better markets for their price realization and the third tool that we have is how do we build the institution capability of the farmer collectives that we work with the entire credit underwriting is non traditional we don't believe in collateral we don't believe in past performance we don't believe in financial statements we don't believe in tax returns because all of this are looking into the rear view mirror and going forward 99.99% of human beings honor their commitment from a geographical expansion we are in about 22 states now uh, we are about uh, 650 people in samunati from a gross transaction perspective between agri finance and agri commerce we are inching towards a 10000 crore mark uh, you know from the loan on my house to 10000 crores has been a journey but the best part the best part from a financial perspective when many people said are why why are you getting into agriculture and lending the loss actual write off the credit cost of any business that they say is about 0.4% it only validated the trust any important meeting in samunati whether it is the entire town hall that we have with about 650 people over zoom or a leadership call that we have before any such important meeting we actually center ourselves and all that we say is hey can we close our eyes and make a prayer that the one who is guiding us guides us to make a right decision which is in the interest of a larger humanity so we are not touching you know a, a, any personal beliefs and faiths of the leadership team or the team members but then the prayer is universal right all that we are saying is hey guide us in the right path and our right path is 
what we are going to decide in this meeting benefits a larger humanity. So there are costs of learning, you know, some decisions go wrong. Uh, there is, you know, there are many, many instances of uh, being driven by intuition, being, being driven by what feels right, uh, though logically it may not. Uh, and case in point is uh, the first, first uh, wave of COVID. Uh, we had two options as an organization. One option is preserve our cash flows because we had no clue whether we'll have money or not. But what felt right for us at that point in time is our customers are also going through the same liquidity constraints. This is the time that you need to be with the customer. When you say you are a partner, you, you have to be a partner. So we made this decision that we will not hold the money back. We will turn around. In fact, we increased our disbursements. And some of the larger borrowers who were who were not as active as they were prior to the pandemic, we went to them saying, hey, you know what, we need to support our, our more vulnerable clients. Can you prepay some of your loans? And they prepaid. Right? So the liquidity was coming from the customers who did not want money, parting with their liquidity, trusting in us that we would actually go back to them and, and, and make good that liquidity when they need, which we did later. And then the market responded. We started getting more and more liquidity and we started deploying more and more liquidity. In the first, first wave of COVID in the six months, we did close to 700 crores of uh, market linkages. When a company lives for the purpose for which it exists, success and profitability comes automatically than the reverse of it. And the dimension is markets have been working off the farmer we are trying to replace the off with the for. Markets working for the farmers, farmer at the same time. This is why we exist and this is what we do. This, this was not a business. This continues to be not a business for us. Most of us who are part of the initial team, we all consider that this is an opportunity to do something meaningful that, that, that you know, gives us uh, some satisfaction that uh, you know we are here for a purpose